वेलकम टू आर्मी कंट्रोलर ट्रेनिंग मॉड्यूल इंस्पायर्ड बाय श्री संजीव मित्तल आई डी ए एस कंट्रोलर जनरल ऑफ डिफेंस अकाउंट लिरिक्स बाय श्री संजीव कुमार आई डी ए एस एडिशनल सेक्रेटरी एंड फाइनेंशियल एडवाइजर Ministry of Rural Development Government of India presented by Principal Controller of Defence Accounts Southwestern Command Army Jaipur Conception and Patronage by Shri Saroj Kumar IDAS Principal Controller of Defence Accounts Southwestern Command Army Jaipur Chief Mentor and Reviewer Shri Himanshu Shankar IDAS Integrated Financial Advisor साउथ वेस्टर्न कमांड आर्मी जयपुर डायरेक्टेड बाय डॉक्टर भुवनेश कुमार वर्मा आई डी ए एस ज्वाइंट कंट्रोलर ऑफ डिफेंस अकाउंट असिस्टेंट डायरेक्टर्स श्री अभिषेक शर्मा आई डी ए एस श्री सुशील रियाड आई डी ए एस श्री मोहन लाल मीना आई डी ए एस एंड श्री डी के ओजा आई डी ए एस Defence Accounts Department comes under the Ministry of Defence with the Controller General of Defence Accounts as its head. It is one of the oldest central government departments functioning for more than 270 years. The duties of Defence Accounts Department are broadly audit, payment, accounting and financial advice to armed forces, ordnance factories, border roads, DRDO, coast guard etc. The department is also responsible for making payment of pension to retired armed forces personnel including defense civilians. The quality policy is the defense accounts department is committed to render efficient, correct and prompt accounting, payment and financial services leading to customer satisfaction. It is also committed to render efficient audit services to ensure public accountability. The mission statement of our department is we strive to achieve excellence and professionalism in accounting and financial services and in performing audit functions. Minimum government maximum governance is the present government's commitment. and being part of the administration we are mandated to fulfill this commitment as defense accounts department we are expected to provide effective financial advice internal audit and efficient accounting services to ministry of defense and its organizations including the three services to achieve this we require a clear sense of responsibility at all levels integration of the existing work procedures with the dynamically changing work environment by constantly adapting to new challenges quickly in a professional manner for this we have to strengthen our workforce with the required knowledge and expertise through suitably devised training programs in this direction i congratulate shri saroj kumar principal controller of defense accounts south western command for conceptualizing and creating the training module for the army controllers for meeting the departmental training requirements such effort is all the more commendable since it has been undertaken during the period of covid-19 pandemic related national lockdown and its related restrictions on office functioning and travel i have assessed these modules and it is my opinion that the contents of each video tutorial are adequate for providing in-depth knowledge about the subject as also its practical aspects through examples and case studies i hope this army controller training module will become a milestone in imparting departmental training online and shall further motivate other controllers to develop similar video tutorials on other topics as envisaged in the dad training and development policies 2019 moreover development of e learning modules is the need of the r for training of our officers and staff once again i feel great pleasure in conveying my best wishes to all the officers and staff 
involved for contributing to the development of these training modules in a comprehensive and effective manner, especially in view of the fact that the entire exercise was carried out by officers and staff members of Principal CDS Southwestern Command. I hope to see more of such innovative developments in future for enhancing the training functions of our department. I would like to end with these few lines from Shri Amit Arjun Bhardwaj, a motivational expert. Kuch karna hai to dhatkar chal, thoda dunia se hatkar chal. Leak par to sabhi chal lete hain, kabhi itihas ko palat kar chal. Milega teri mehnat ka fal, kisi aur ka na intizar kar. Kuch karna hai to dhatkar chal, thoda dunia se hatkar chal. Thank you. Jai Hind. मित्रों आज देश ही नहीं वरन संपूर्ण विश्व एक भयंकर त्रासदी से गुजर रहा है ऐसी स्थिति में सभी प्रकार के कार्य बुरी तरह से प्रभावित हुए हैं फिर चाहे वो सरकारी कार्य हो अथवा गैर सरकारी कार्य हमारे विभाग का एक महत्वपूर्ण कार्य अपने अधिकारियों व कर्मचारियों के लिए प्रशिक्षण की उचित व्यवस्था करना है जिससे हम अपने निर्धारित कार्य को सुव्यवस्थित दक्षता एवं गुणवत्ता पूर्ण ढंग से संचालित कर सकें। वर्तमान विश्व त्रासदी को देखते हुए आज सभी जगह सामाजिक दूरी एक अनिवार्यता हो गई है जिससे कि हम स्वयं को तथा अपने आसपास के लोगों को संक्रमित होने से रोक सकें। इसी को दृष्टिगत रखते हुए यह सोचा गया है कि हम प्रशिक्षण में ई लर्निंग माध्यम को अपना अपने अधिकारियों व कर्मचारियों को ऐसे किसी जोखिम से बचाते हुए दूरस्थ प्रशिक्षण के माध्यम से प्रशिक्षित कर सके रक्षा लेखा महानियंत्रक महोदय के मार्गदर्शन में ट्रेनिंग मॉड्यूल इसी सोच का परिणाम है और इसमें हमने उन महत्वपूर्ण विषयों को समाहित किया है जो सामान्यतया कमांड पीसीडीए सीडीए के लिए अति आवश्यक है हमारे अधिकारियों और कर्मचारियों ने पूरा प्रयास किया है की कि गुणवत्ता पूरी तरह से बनी रहे तथा वर्तमान नियमों अधिनियमों को भी सम्मिलित करने का प्रयास किया गया है मुझे पूर्ण विश्वास है कि यह मॉड्यूल हमारे लोगों को समुचित प्रशिक्षण प्रदान करने में सार्थक होगा जिससे वे अपने कार्यों को कुशलता व दक्षता पूर्वक संपादित कर सकेंगे धन्यवाद यही हमारा मूल मंत्र हो यही हमारा लक्ष्य परम सर्वश्रेष्ठ हो सर्वप्रिय हो कार्य करें सर उत्तम भाई अग्नि धरा और अंबर भाई अग्नि धरा और अंबर यही संदेशा दे करें हम श्रेष्ठ निरंतर ना हमसे कोई भूल हो ना हमसे कोई भूल हो सर्वश्रेष्ठ हो सर्वप्रिय हो कार्य करें सर्वोत्तम यही हमारा मूल मंत्र हो यही हमारा लक्ष्य परम सर्वश्रेष्ठ हो सर्वप्रिय हो कार्य करें सर्वोत्तम यही हमारा Welcome friends, I am Anurag Saxena and I am Ayushi Jain. Together we are here to talk about a very important and inseparable part of government functioning that is noting and drafting. Now almost all of government functioning is dependent upon decisions. It's communication to the intended user, implementation and records. This is where noting and drafting comes into play. Before we begin on the actuals of noting and drafting, let's understand few basic words which would be used extensively during this module. First comes note. It means the remarks recorded on a case 
to facilitate its disposal and includes a precy of previous papers, a statement or analysis of the questions requiring decision, suggestions regarding the course of action and final orders passed thereon. Also, it can be used to bring a matter of importance to knowledge of the seniors. A draft is a rough sketch of communication to be issued after approval of the proposal by the officer concerned. As is evident from the definition, a note is used to obtain orders or to apprise the seniors of a matter of importance. And a draft is a rough sketch of the official document used to communicate the decision. Let's start with the first part of the whole process, that's noting. The government functions largely on physical written records so as to allow future retrieval. When initiating a note, it's always done in a relevant file. Now, why do we need notings? In time, the originator of the note and the authority competent to issue orders will change and it would be almost impossible to ascertain as to why an order was issued and what all factors were considered while arriving at the decision. Mm -hmm. This is very important for any future reference or reviews. Some of the important words of relevance are a lengthy summary or statement containing detailed information concerning certain aspects of the questions discussed on the file, incorporation of which in the file is likely to obscure the main point or make the main point unnecessarily lengthy. Such lengthy summary is referenced in the note and then moved away from the note and placed in the file as appendix to the note. Second comes the case. A current file or a receipt together with other related papers, if any, is called a case. A case received back for further action such as re-examination or preparing a draft or a summary of case is called a comeback case. Now coming over to file, which means a collection of papers arranged chronologically on a specific subject matter assigned a file number and consisting of the following parts. First is notes, second correspondence, third appendix to notes and the fourth is appendix to the correspondence. A current file is a file or action on which has not yet been completed. Now moving further, indexing. Indexing of a file means a guide which is used to locate the required contents. It indicates or points out the exact place of the content. This is done by indicating the title under appropriate catchwords arranged in their alphabetical order followed by the rest of the words and the file number to facilitate its retrieval. Referencing. It is the process of identifying a document, decision and facts mentioned in a note, draft or office copy of communication issued. PUC, which means paper or proposal under consideration. It is a receipt pertaining to a case, the consideration of which is the subject matter of the case. Like I should use the word receipt, a receipt is a duck after it has been received by the concerned individual. A record. Record is an information preserved in a physical medium, something set down in writing or other permanent form for future reference like a electronic form or something like that. Now comes the sectional note. It is a note recorded on only one of the many issues raised in the PUC. Security grading. A security marking on only one of the many issues raised in the PUC. It means security marking such as confidential, secret or top secret. Urgent dark is the dark marked immediate or priority and include fax, email, court, cat or RTI cases, parliamentary matters, etc. Coming over to some noting guidelines. Everyone has got a different style of writing. A note may be written in a different way by one individual and the same note may be put up by a, in a different form by some other individual. However, certain rules are to be followed so that we have a uniformity of noting across all people. Some of these are, first, quoting of authority and use of proper linking and referencing to the authority quoted is an absolute must. Now the second one is breakup in paragraph. A note will be divided into paragraph of a convenient size. Paragraphs should be serially numbered and may also have brief titles if necessary. Brevity. All notes should be concise and to the point. Excessive noting should be avoided. It's always better to adopt a simple and direct style of writing. Exactly. It's always better to avoid using complicated and ambiguous languages as it may result in wrong reinterpretation and likely repercussions. Now notes and orders should normally be recorded on note sheets. Verbatim reproductions of extracts from or paraphrasing of the PUC or of notes of other ministries recorded on the same file should be avoided. 
now comes the avoid paraphrasing which means wherever a running summary of facts is available on the file it should be referred to without repeating any part of the facts in the note use of proper referencing and linking is an absolute must to ensure that the reader can easily pull out the referenced order or letters without wasting time in searching for the same again a note should always be written in a business like language even if apparent errors or misstatements have to be pointed out or if an opinion expressed therein has to be criticized care should be taken to couch the observations in courteous and temperate language free from personal remarks when passing orders or making suggestions an officer should confine his note to the actual points he proposes to make he should not repeat or reiterate the ground already covered in the previous notes if he agrees to the line of action suggested in the preceding note he should merely append his signatures a self contained summary of the case should always be put up with every file submitted and such a summary should bring out briefly but clearly all the relevant facts including the views expressed on the subject by other departments if any consulted in the matter and the points on which the orders are sought when a paper under consideration raises several major points which require detailed examination and respective orders on each point separately or group of related points it will be noted upon separately in sectional notes and such sectional notes will each begin with a list of major points dealt with therein the dealing hand will always append his full signature with date on the left below the note also the officer will append his full signature on the right hand side of the note with his name designation and the date now comes a very important topic that is modification of notes sometimes it may so happen that the note being put up to an officer the officer concerned not like what is being put up or he may not agree to the same in that case he may ask the certain modifications to be carried out in the notes however the following rules are to be followed whenever a senior officer finds it necessary to correct or to modify the facts stated in a note put up to him he should do so by recording his own note giving his views on the subject he should not require the note recorded by his junior to be modified or replaced we have to keep in mind that notes recorded on a file should in no circumstances be pasted over because pasting over amounts to mutilation of official records and gives an inelegant look to the file if any modification of an earlier note is found necessary recording a note explaining the nature and extent of modification and reasons for it should do it the earlier note should remain intact and part of the file forever now moving forward to the noting structure which includes the note number the file number and date puc or subject previous note reference if any and the brief of the note the detailed subject matter authorities or orders on the subject if any must be quoted the proposal what is being sought the most important signature of the initiator and designation of the officer to whom the note is marked now comes referencing referencing is the process of identifying a document decisions and facts mentioned in a note draft or office copy of communication issued it involves a series of activities the process involved in the referencing are every page in each part of the file will be consecutively numbered in separate series in pencil blank intervening pages if any will not be numbered second each item of correspondence in a file whether receipt or issue will be assigned a serial number which will be displayed prominently in red ink on the top middle portion of its first page the paper under consideration on a file will be flagged as puc and the latest fresh received noted upon as fr in no circumstances will a slip other than puc and fr be attached to any paper in the current file in case if there are more than one fresh receipt in a case these should be flagged as fr1 fr2 and so on and referring to the papers flagged puc or fr the relevant page numbers will be quoted invariably in the margin to facilitate the identification of references to papers contained in other files invariably in the body of the note the relevant page numbers together with the alphabetical slips attached thereto will be indicated in the margins similarly the number and date of orders notifications and resolutions and in case of acts rules and regulations their brief title together with the number of the relevant section rule paragraph or clause referred to will be quoted in the body of the notes 
recorded files and other papers put up with the current file will be flagged with alphabetical slips for quick identification and only one alphabetical slip will be attached to a record file or compilation if two or more papers contained in the same file or compilation are to be referred to they should be identified by the relevant page numbers in addition to the alphabetical slip for example a 2 by 3 n or a by 17 c and so on the reference slip should be pinned neatly on the inside of the paper sought to be flagged when a number of papers put up in a case are to be flagged the slips will be spread over the entire width of the file so that every slip is easily visible now coming over to the important part of drafting so what is a draft A draft is a rough sketch of communication to be issued after approval by the officer concerned. Now, before putting up a draft, it is imperative that answers to the following questions be obtained to put up the cover draft. Like, is a draft necessary? Who should be addressed and who will sign? What is the relationship between the sender and the receiver? What should be the form of the draft? Is something to be conveyed or to be called for? What is the intention of the decision? Does the language convey? or has the referencing been done is the draft logically sequenced does it have proper urgency security gradings so the answers of which are a draft should be clear concise complete and incapable of misconstruction it should carry the exact message sought to be conveyed the draft should result in the desired response from the recipient it should be divided into paragraphs according to the logical sequence of the ideas expressed and have coherence of flow of ideas it should contain references to previous correspondence if any now what should a draft indicate let's have a look it should indicate the file number the name designation telephone number fax number and complete postal address of the sender organization the name designation of the addressee with complete postal address and proper salutation like sir dear or whatever is required it should contain subject number and date of the last communication in the series it should have also have proper enclosures which are to accompany the fair copy it should also have a proper subscription that is the ending like yours faithfully yours sincerely the mode of transmission must be written either by registered post or by special messenger etc at the top right corner also the urgency grading should also be mentioned if required now coming over to some of the different forms of communications we have letters letters are written to foreign governments state governments constitutional authorities like upsc election commission public enterprises statutory authorities public bodies attached or subordinate offices or members of public now comes the office memorandum it should be sent to attached subordinate offices other ministries departments other section units within the same ministry or departments and offices and employees a demi official letter when an officer of equivalent level and of one or two level above the sender is to be addressed through a personal note as an official kind of note then a demi official letter is used second comes interdepartmental notes now it is used for communication between ministries other government departments and various sections of the same office the structure of letter can be divided into a letter head which bears the name of the department and branch in other cases the name of the offices file number and date of communication including the name and or organization of sender it should also contain the name and or designation of the addressee after the name and designation of addressee there should be a subject and reference in the subject we will be written in clear terms and will be brief it will indicate the contents of the letter the reference is used to indicate past communication in the matter if any letter addressed to official authorities begin with salutation like sir or dear sir all official letters end with subscription like yours faithfully followed by the signature and designation of the person signing the letter in the main text of the letter the language is used should be clear and to the point in case one is dealing with a number of issues a separate paragraph should be used for each point Let's have a look to the format of the letter. First, we have the letter head of the office. Second, here is the letter number and in the right corner is the date. Now, here is the address of the recipient. Then subject, 
reference if any for the previous conversations now comes the body of letter in the end the signature and the designation of the sender enclosures if there are any and copy if you want to copy the letters now coming over to the office memorandum it is a form that is generally used for correspondence between the departments of the same government it is also used in calling for information from or conveying information to its employees it is written in the third person and bears no salutation or subscription except for the name and designation of the officer signing it the name of the department to which the communication is addressed is shown below the signature on the extreme left of the page generally important government instructions and clarifications etc are issued in the form of office memorandum the use of this form in correspondence with heads of the departments and subordinate office should be avoided here friends is an example of an office memorandum on the top initially the file number or the reference number through the of which the office order memorandum has been issued thereafter the name of the organization which has issued this office memorandum then we have the place where the office memorandum was issued the date on which the office memorandum was issued then we have the subject whatever the subject of the office memorandum is and then the actual contents of the memorandum thereafter the name and the designation of the person issuing the om is appended and then the list of the addresses now comes dummy official letters in writing dummy official letters one has to keep in mind that this form is generally used in correspondence between government officers for an interchange or communication of opinion or information without the formality of the prescribed procedure it may also be used when it is desired that a matter should receive personal attention to the individual addressed communication to non official can also take the form of a do letter dummy official communication is addressed personally by name or designation it is written in the first person singular with the salutation my dear name of the person or dear name of the person and terminating with your sincerely signed by the officer without mentioning his designation below his signature okay friends here's a demo of what our do letter looks like on the left hand side we have the name of the person issuing the dummy official letter since it's a government letter we have the national emblem in the center please follow the government rules as far as national emblem is concerned on the right hand side we have the address of the office in which the person is working then we have the file number and the date on which the letter was issued then we have the personal salutation dear commissioner whatever then the matter on which the do was written finally the salutation by the sender you will sign off by writing yours sincerely or whatever his name and the signature without his designation and thereafter will come the address of the recipient next comes a very important form of communication that is interdepartmental note or id note which was formerly known as uo note an official note an id note or a uo note is used to communicate with attached and subordinate offices it is also used to communicate with other departments when their advice views comments concurrence etc are required on a subject it may be either recorded on a file referred to another department or may take the form of a self contained note here friends is an example of a u note or a id note on the top right hand side we'll see a proper marking as whether this is an important letter or confidential or whatever then the name of the organization from which the u note was initiated along with the section name then we have the subject i the topic on which the u note was written then the u notes content whatever there may be past references if any then the name signature and designation of the person initiating the u note along with his telephone number please note that noting of telephone number is of, of utmost importance nowadays because somehow in case the person to whom the u note was uh, addressed was not able to understand something he can always get back in touch with the person initiating the note then we have the name of the person to whom the u note was addressed there can be more than one thereafter we have the file number through which the u note was initiated file number and the date we may have copies if any which can be sent to other organizations this concludes a brief overview of drafting and noting module remember writing is an art 
and there are no fixed parameters or standards regarding writing styles. However, consistency of format is appreciated for continuity and ease of understanding. All the formats shown in the module are subject to change as per the government guidelines. We tried to cover all the do's and don'ts regarding noting and drafting. We hope that you find it useful in your future. Thank, Thank you, you and, and take, take care. care. निश्चित्वा यह प्रक्रमते नांतर वसती कर्मणः अवंध्य कालो वश्यात्मा स वै पंडित उच्यते अर्थात जो व्यक्ति किसी भी कार्य व्यवहार को निश्चय पूर्वक आरंभ करता है उसे बीच में नहीं रोकता समय को बर्बाद नहीं करता तथा अपने मन को नियंत्रण में रखता है वही ज्ञानी है